Good morning and welcome to our devotions today. Thank you, Judy Ebersole, for playing uh, for us this morning. God is here among us and all glory, laud, and honor. This morning I'm going to be using a scripture from John 1, verses 43 to 51. And looking at the, the title here, to, to Know and to Be Known. Starting at uh, verse 43. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now, Philip was from Bethesda, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote. Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael uh, coming towards him, he said of him, He is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. So two things that kind of stood out to me in this uh, scripture text, this text this morning. The first is to know Jesus, and the second is to be known by Jesus. So here we have Nathaniel, who was known by Jesus. Um, We had an elementary school teacher who knew, uh, or uh, I'm sorry, not a teacher, well, a teacher, but we also had uh, the principal who knew the names of all the students 
and could connect each student with their parents or guardian. <clears throat> we were new kindergarten parents um, 20, 19 years ago, <laughs> hard to believe. Um, having the person who was responsible for over 400 children identifying you um, by name and your child left an impression of welcome and worth. It's the feeling of being more than just a number or a face in the crowd. When Jesus addresses Nathaniel as the one who, whom there is no deceit, he responds, Jesus responds, or no, Nathaniel responds, where did you get to know me? There is something about being known and understood that is important to our sense of self. Jesus has done this with many others. He saw Zacchaeus up in the tree, the woman who touched his clothes, and the widow who gave all she had. Jesus saw in many ways, um, Jesus saw in a way uh, many were unable to see and unwilling to see. He was curious with others uh, when, uh, yeah, he was curious where others made assumptions and listened when others shushed him. He offered the opportunity for people to be known and to know him and thus know God. Razi Cohn lived about 15 minutes from Capitol Hill. His story is that he ran away from a civil war in the Ivory Coast and now a permanent resident in the United States working on citizenship. He makes it clear, um, he says that while he was running away from the war, he didn't feel like a refugee. He said he was a 17 year old who wanted more opportunities. He wanted a wider choice of colleges and to live someplace where there was hope. Well, he lived near the Capitol on January 6th, a couple years ago. And he said he felt dismayed that the violence he left was happening here in our country, in his new adopted country. Cohen goes on to say, we need to show curiosity about each other and a willingness to listen to the other side. I think that Jesus showed curiosity about people, not the nosiness of gossip or an overbearing parent, but the kind of curiosity that wants to get to know people in a way that extends welcome and worth. Well, second here, Nathaniel learns to know Jesus. Words from the Working Preacher Commentary offers the following thoughts about Nathaniel's epiphany of knowing Jesus. They write, epiphanies tend to transform people. Yeah, let me find my place again. Epiphanies tra tend to transform people. This is seen in Nathaniel's change and in an epiphany-induced change that Martin Luther King Jr. also describes in a book in his book, Stride Towards Freedom. So thinking about epiphanies, Nathaniel's epiphany about Jesus, and they related to Martin Luther King Jr.'s description, epiphany. As we think about um, Martin Luther King Day coming up, um, King says, I was ready to give up. This is what he wrote here. I was ready to give up with my cup of coffee Sitting untouched before me, I tried to think of a way to move out of the picture without appearing coward. In the state of exhaustion, when my courage had all, gone, all but gone, I decided to take my problem to God. With my head in my hands, I bowed over the kitchen table and prayed aloud. The words I spoke to God that midnight are still vivid in my memory, he said. I am here taking a stand for what I believe is right, but now I am afraid. 
The people are looking for me to lead. And if I stand before them without strength and courage, they too will falter. I end my, uh, I'm at the end of my powers. I have nothing left. I have come to the point where I can't face it alone. And at that moment, I experience the presence of the divine as I've never experienced before. It seemed as though I could hear the quiet assurance of an inner voice saying, stand up for justice, stand up for truth, and God will be at your side forever. Almost at once, my fears began to go. My uncertainties disappeared. And I was ready to face anything. So here, many would say that Martin Luther King Jr. had an epiphany. And that epiphany is often referred to as the vision in the kitchen. Nathaniel's epiphany, in which he suddenly could clearly see Jesus, changed him forever, who then proclaimed Jesus as rabbi, the son of God, the king of Israel. Philip told Nathanael, come and see. He invited him to come and learn to know Jesus as well. And at the same time, Jesus tells him here, um, here is, Jesus tells him, here is someone from Israel that knows no deceit. He knew Nathanael's heart. We can rest in the security as followers of Jesus, in knowing Jesus, that we are also fully known and loved by God. Let's pray. God, we thank you for your son, Jesus, who came into this world and called followers to lead and disciple, who went and discipled others and mentored others and led others. And as we read these texts, Lord, may we also become more aware of each other, that we may see you and be known by you and know you intimately. May we be curious about you and about each other and about your love. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.